Let's look at this problem. We have a simple truss structure subjected to multiple applied forces, uh, and it's supported by a roller at point A and a pin support at point C. And we're going to determine the force in each of the members in the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. Um, these several trusses, they are all of the same length. Therefore, we can determine that these angles, this one, this one, this one, this one, etc., etc., all of them are going to be 45 degree angles. So I'm just going to write one as an example. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is to identify if there's any uh, f uh, zero force members. In this case, we do have one that is BE because at joint B, we have three members, AB, BC, and BE connected together, and AB and BC are collinear. So the third one, BE, at an angle with these two, that must be a zero force member. Um, in this case, even though EG and FG are the only two members join together and they're at an angle, but because there is an external force acting at point G, therefore neither of them is a um, zero force member. Same reason for AD and DE. Um, actually, DE is a zero force member, but at a glance, you should not assume that AD and DE are zero force members. So in this case, the only one is BE. So at this point, I'm going to um, mark it off. So I do not consider it in uh, the future analysis. Um, FEF, even though it looks just like BE, but because there is a force acting at point F, so member EF is not a zero force member. And then we need to determine if it's necessary to um, solve for any of the support reactions. In this case, it's not necessary because at point D and point G, we only have two unknown, uh, unknown force forces. Um, we can solve for two unknowns at each joint because essentially method of joint is a particle equilibrium analysis. Um, so we can start with either joint D or joint G since they both have only two unknowns. All the other joints will have more unknowns. Except for B, however, at point B, the two forces AB and BC are collinear, so they are actually the same. So you can determine that FAB equals to FAC, uh, sorry, BC. They are of the same magnitude and the same sense. So if FAB is tension, FBC must be tension as well, vice versa. The reason is because with BE gone, you can actually cons uh, assume member AB and BC form one truss member. Therefore, it, it has to have the same uh, force with the same sense throughout it, the member. However, even if you can tell this, you still cannot know for sure what the magnitude is. So I'm going to start with joint D. So I'm going to start drawing the free body diagram at joint D. We have known 120 Newton force and the two unknown forces, I draw them in assumed tension direction. So um, in this case, I'm going to use the conventional X and Y coordinate system. Therefore, along the X direction, we only have FDE, which is zero. Along the Y direction, we have negative 120 because up is positive, and then minus FAD, and that equals to zero as well. So from here, we can solve for FAD to be negative 120 Newton, because the original, originally assumed direction is a tensile direction. Now the negative sign indicates that the, um, the correct direction has to be opposite to what I originally assumed. So this is going to be a tensile direction. So, so I have that and that. Let me mark those two on my drawing as well. 
so I don't consider them again. I don't have to solve for them again. So next I move on to joint G because joint G also has only two unknowns. So I have this known 200 Newton force and unknown F, FG and then another unknown FEG. So again, I'm using conventional x and y direction, resultant force along the x direction, positive is to the right. That equals to, I will have a negative FEG times, um, let's say, cosine 45 degree, minus 200 Newton equals to zero. Resultant force along the y direction, up is positive, so I have a negative FEG sine 45 degree minus F, FG equals to zero. So from here, I can solve for both of them. So FEG is solved to be a negative 283 Newton, which is going to be compressive. And then F, FG is solved to be positive 200 Newton, which is tensile. So again, I'm going to mark them. I have EG and uh, FG. So next, I'm going to move on to joint F, because at, right now, at point F, I only have two unknowns, EF and CF. So I have FG has already been solved. That's 200 Newton. Therefore, I have to draw it with that new information. That's the 200 Newton. That's uh, F, FG right here. Always use the information that you have already obtained. And then I have 160 Newton force applied force at an angle. All right. And then two unknowns, FEF, FCF. So again, using conventional X and Y coordinate system, I have negative FEF minus 160 times cosine 45 degree equals to zero. Resultant force along the Y direction, up is positive. I have 200 minus 160 times sine 45 degree and then minus FCF equals to zero. So from here, I can solve for both of them. FEF equals to negative 113 Newton, and that's compressive. And then FCF equals to um, 86.9 Newton tensile. So that's two more down. Next, I'm going to move on to point E. The reason why I do not use point A or point C is because point A has its own support reaction from the roller, plus two more unknown, A, B, and A, E. So there are three unknowns. Point C has one unknown here, one unknown here, and then two more, C, X, and C, Y, from the support. Therefore, point A and C are not good choices, but instead we're going to choose point E. So for joint E, we have 283 Newton force compressive. That is from FEG that we just solved earlier from the step. And then we have um, known 113 Newton compressive. That is from FEF. We just solved in this step. And then the two unknowns, FAE and then FCE. So at this point, you can use the conventional 
X and Y coordinate system. But because my FAE and FCE are nicely at a 90 degree angle, they're perpendicular to each other. Therefore, if you change your coordinate system, if you align it differently, for example, I'm going to pick this one to be my X direction and this one to be my Y direction. So that FAE is along the X direction completely and FCE is along the Y direction completely. So hopefully that will help me solve this problem easier. And these angles are both 45 degree angles. So I'm going to summarize my force along the X direction. Remember, this is my positive X direction now. And I will have my unknown FAE plus 283 Newton that's completely along the X direction plus another component from the 113 Newton force. Then along the y direction, remember my y direction is in this direction now. I have my unknown FCE completely along the y direction. And then 113 for Newton force has also a component along the y direction that equals to zero. So from there, I can solve for my FCE is 79.9, it's actually 80 newton force and that is in tension and then fae is going to be negative 363 newton force and that is in compression so we're almost done. So now we've solved for CE and AE. The only thing left is AB, but don't forget AB and BC are the same. So we only have one unknown left. So at this point, we're going to choose point A because even though we have an unknown AY here, the, there's only one more unknown FAB. Therefore, we can solve for both of them, even though we don't need to solve for a y. So lastly, joint A. So at joint A, we have FAD, we have solved for FAD, that is negative 120 Newton, which is a compressive 120 Newton force. Okay. And we just solve for FAE, which is going to be in this direction, 363 Newton. We have our two unknowns, a Y from the support reaction, and then FAB. That's the only unknown remaining. So we don't really need two equations because we are not interested in solving a Y. So we just need one equation coming back to the conventional direction for x right is positive and that equals to negative 363 times cosine 45 degree plus fab to be zero from here we can solve for fab which equals to um, 267 newton tensile and don't forget fab is the same as fbc So at this point, we have solved for the forces in all the members in our truss structure, and we have noted if they are in tension or compression.